first question from Sarah Spencer. Hey, Travis. Um, how much more competitive do you feel you've made this team with the, with the moves you've made in free agency and I guess one trade? Um, and how happy are you with the roster at this point? Well, we feel good about the way really the draft and free agency played out. Um, you know, we, we targeted some guys um, and we're able to get quite a few of them, uh, to be frank with you. I guess that's what happens when you have the most money in the market. But um, there, it's, it's no secret that um, we wanted to be aggressive in free agency this year, unlike past years. Um, and we, we just feel real fortunate we're able to, you know, come away with the, the group of guys that we did. Thank you. Okay, next question from Paul Newberry with the AP. Hi, Travis, how you doing? Uh, I, yeah, hey, I just, uh, how, you know, I think I probably know the answer to this, but how rewarding is this uh, when you go through the last three years like you did and you, you're having to be patient and you know there's not going to be a lot of wins necessarily? Um, how tough is that to go through and how, you know, rewarding is it when you, you know, you're finally able to kind of take, try to take that step forward? Well, I mean, we, we all know, and I try to be up front and honest with the fans and you guys of the process we decided to go down. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard on everybody. You know, it's hard on the players. It's hard on the staff. It's hard on the fans. But I think as long as you're honest and up front with everybody and they know what the, the big picture is, you know, they'll, they'll accept it. Um, and, you know, we were obviously real fortunate um, in the draft. We got lucky, you know, in the mid first round a few times with John and Kevin Herter. Uh, and we feel like we're able to, you know, do well when we were able to pick in the top 10. Um, so that, that's a, that's a big piece of it. Um, when you make, go down this path, you, you, you have to hopefully make good decisions, you know, with your draft picks. Um, and we feel like we've been able to do that. You know, the, what makes this tricky um, is, you know, the draft is not an exact science and, and you can make mistakes up there because you're, you know, picking 18, 19, 20 year old men trying to pro project what they're going to do in this league. So, um, you know, if you, if you make one of those mistakes, <laughs> only have one pick and stumble, it, it can take you all of a sudden now you're two years instead of what should be one year. So it's a, uh, it's it's a long process for sure. Um, you know, we feel good about the draft process that we went through, and that's why we turned to free agency and trying to bolster our team with veterans to, you know, help our young guys continue and, and grow. Next question from Chris Kirshner. Sorry about that. Um, with the additions you made, do you feel – confident that you now have enough defensive talent to see a noticeable difference on that end of the floor? Well, you know, we talked about Big O um, the other day after our draft call. You know, that's his calling card. And as you've heard me say before, you know, the base of your defense is your front line, right, your center position. Um, you know, we obviously traded for Clint last year, who's a good rim protector, good rebounder. Adding Big O, who has the same strengths as a good rim protector, good rebounder. Um, you know, once he's healthy um, and back out there, and even Bruno, um, who we saw play last year, who is one of our better rim protectors, uh, just as a big body, active body in the lane. Um, that, that's the foundation of your defense right there. Um, and then as you look at you know, some of the guys we added in free agency, um, you know, Tony Snell has a reputation of being a, a good wing defender. Um, Solomon Hill, the reputation of being a good wing defender. I guess he's not technically signed yet. He's taking his physical right now, but later on this afternoon, we'll get that finalized. And then uh, Rondo, obviously a good uh, perimeter defender. And then, you know, probably the best defender of the group of guys we signed is Chris Dunn, who, you know, is one of the best perimeter def defenders in the whole league. Um, I guess technically we haven't signed him either, so scratch that. Uh, when we when we do sign him, he'll be the best perimeter defender we sign uh, on Friday. So, um, you know, it was certainly one of the things that we wanted to try to address was our defense. And, and we think there'll be growth in our young guys too. Um, you know, we think Cam and DeAndre in particular have the potential to become really solid defensive players in this league. You know, it's just, it's a big transition going from college 
to the NBA and learning the nuances of the game and learning the league. So, you know, we feel like some of our young guys have the potential, and then obviously we feel like we added some quality defenders as well. Next question from Jeff Schultz. Hi, Travis. Um, a couple of things. First, uh, loaded question. They're both loaded questions, which you may not, may or may not answer. But are you done making deals? And and going with that, you you clearly have a lot of depth right now. Um, very strong first ten to twelve or whatever. Is there any possibility, or are you leaving open the possibility that you could actually move somebody off the existing roster right now? Well, right now, um, our roster, well, come Friday when we sign our last player, th those will be the 17 guys we bring to camp. Uh, we don't have any plans to make any changes. Um, the guys that have all been rewarded to be with us during training camp, that's who we're starting the year with. Um, you know, as the season goes on, uh, you know, we'll see, you know, one of the things I really like about uh, where we are is, you know, with the veteran guys we have, with the, the young guys we have, you know, we have a lot of guys on our roster that, that other teams value. So, you know, we always try to keep ourselves in a position. If there is a, you know, a, a star player that comes available, we, we're, we're in position to try to go acquire those. And we're in a nice, a nice situation there because we do have a lot of young talent that people um, value. Uh, and now we have good veterans that we could use to match salaries. So, you know, we're, we're going to continue to look to be aggressive as we build this team out. But uh, we're, we're certainly not looking to do that. But if those opportunities come forward, we're, we're going we're gonna to try to be aggressive there. But we're, we're real comfortable with the group of guys we have. And we're excited to see this group uh, start the season here next week. Okay, our next question will come from Mark Medina, USA Today. Travis, good to see you. Happy early Thanksgiving. Hello. Um, what do you expect Trey Young and Rajon Rondo will get out of that partnership? Well, you know, as I, as I mentioned earlier, you know, one of the things when we were doing our research going into free agency about uh, Rondo was just how he's essentially like another coach in the locker room for the young guys. Um, you know, he, he watches film, he sits in on coaches' meetings, he, you know, just really takes the part of mentor um, to heart. Um, so, you know, to have, you know, if not the best, you know, the second best game manager in the NBA, he and Chris Paul, to, for Trey to be able to learn from and him to be able to pass all that wisdom on to Trey, we, we just feel like that's unbelievably valuable for Trey and all the rest of our young guys. Next question from Ray Glear. Travis, uh, talk about the Gallinari Collins scenario at four. They both profile as starters. Yeah. Hello? <laughs> uh, 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 where's the question? That's a statement. Oh, you didn't hear it? No, you, that's a statement. They both profile at fours. That's statement. Yeah, talk about that. Can you talk about that? Uh, yeah, listen, one of the goals we set out this year was to go and have a deep team uh, with a lot of good players. Um, so, you know, I think when you look across the board, uh, really at all our positions, the hope is that we have good players that start and good players come off the bench. All right, next we'll go to Raphael Haynes. Hello, Travis. With all the depth you have for the team, you have a lot of players that are more versatile that can uh, play different positions. Was that your pinpoint going into this offseason? Yeah, um, I mean, listen, you guys can probably tell by the way that we've drafted or players we've signed. Um, in a perfect world, in, in my mind, you know, if we had a bunch of six, eight, six, nine guys that were multidimensional, dribble, pass, and shoot, uh, that that was the perfect kind of in today's NBA, in my mind. And so we we certainly put an emphasis on guys that could play multi-positional uh, basketball. Um, you know, so it, it is as we tried to build this roster to give ourselves the most flexibility as possible, give coach the most flexibility possible as different lineups he can put on the floor. 
especially going into a season where we're in the middle of a pandemic um, and, you know, two or three guys could be sick and, you know, and out for a week or two, you know, we, we, we wanted to have the most versatile group of guys we could for sure. And then just to follow up on that, you, you mentioned, you already talked about Rondo, having Rondo with Trey, but even have the addition of Chris Dunn, was there, um, what was your thinking behind that? Getting three point guards, valuable point guards who, you know, especially with Trey getting the bulk of the minutes. Well, again, so Chris is a guy, if you think back in Chicago last year, I mean, they, they really essentially played him a lot on the wing, um, guarding the other team's best offensive player, whether it was a two or a three. I mean, he's that good defensively that he can get up into guys. So, you know, we view him just kind of like a, as a pit bull out there that, you know, we can just stick on the other team's best score uh, at any position. And obviously, you know, he can run the point offensively. Um, you know, Ray John's getting up there a little bit in age as well, you know. So, you know, he, he's missed a few games here or there. Might need an off uh, night off, especially as we're, you know, playing games closer together, trying to get 72 games into a shorter time span. So he wanted to be able to have the ability to keep him fresh as well. So, you know, having that depth, uh, and the combination of those three guys, uh, we feel we feel like we're in a pretty good spot there. Thank you. Next question from home team, Brandon Leak. How you doing, Travis? Uh, what does it say that the uh, free agents and the restricted free agents that you signed wanted to be a part of the franchise, being that you guys didn't make the playoffs? And if you could, what was some of the pitch that you sent to those guys to get them to sign on the dotted line? Well, um, really just the opportunity. Uh, I think most people look at our roster and they see the young talent. Um, and, you know, these, these veteran guys that we brought in, they have a strong belief in their ability. Uh, you know, start, starting with Gallinari, you know, he was in Oklahoma City when they weren't supposed to be very good last year, starting their rebuild. But, you know, he and Chris Paul were huge parts of that team and helped the young guys. Uh, just when he was in with the Clippers before that, you know, he's part of the same. So he's used to that environment uh, and he enjoys that environment, you know, helping to teach the young guys. And obviously I don't know him very well yet, but, you know, again, all the research that we've done on him, you're, you're not, you know, we couldn't find anybody in the NBA to say anything bad about Gallo uh, as far as the type of person he is, the type of person he is in the locker room. Um, so, you know, we were really excited and kind of targeted him and we're fortunate enough to get him. Um, you know, Bogey, Bogey is the same way. You know, Bogey wants to be on a team um, that's going to be competitive. You know, obviously he's been in Sacramento the whole time, but, you know, he knows some of the guys on our roster uh, and, you know, was really excited about coming on. Arajan, again, you know, he really relishes that mentor role. And I think, you know, for him, the ability to teach Trey, he – I think he, he really is looking forward to that. And that's why I said earlier, I think coaching's in, the, in his future because that, that, is, that is something that he really enjoys. Um, and then Chris, you know, I think uh, quite candidly, we, we probably got a little lucky with Chris. You know, the first couple of days of free, free agency went by and, you know, he was looking for a chair and, and we had a chair um, and, you know, he jumped on it. But he, he's certainly excited to be here. So and we, we feel like, you know, we feel like we got real fortunate to be able to grab him when we did. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question from Jamila Johnson. Hey, Travis. Um, so my question is kind of two-part, but if you could give yourself a grade for the free agency, what grade would you give yourself? And also, as far as um, the, the players that you brought on, were they who you were seeking? Or in, were you successful in getting those players that you were looking yeah, well, for? Well, first of all, I, I wouldn't give myself a grade. I guess if I would, it'd be incomplete because we'd have no idea if it's going to work yet, right? <laughs> so, um, as far as the guys we got, yeah, listen, a lot of the a lot of the guys that we had towards the top of our list, we were able to get. Um, you know, certainly we didn't didn't get them all, but um, we feel real real good about the group we're able to get and. Um, we're just excited to get them all on the practice floor next week. Next question from Cody with Fox. Hey, Travis, Cody Chapin's Fox 5. Uh, pardon the Thanksgiving analogy, but it seems like you're the guy who just went to the store, brought home all the ingredients. Do you just turn them over to, to Lloyd at this point and say, 
make me Thanksgiving dinner? Or how much are you involved in his part, telling him maybe I see a role for this guy here? And how much was he involved in making the shopping list? If you will? Well, listen, it's certainly a partnership, right? Um, you know, we, we, we started having free agent meetings amongst my staff all the way back. Um, you know, during the pandemic, you know, trying to rank the guys, come up our list, think about our targets. And coach was on a lot of those calls. Um, you know, as we got closer in November, we really started narrowing it down. You know, he, he was in those meetings and, and we'll give input for sure. Um, and as far as, you know, actual making of the dinner, um, you know, I, their jobs is to coach the team. I don't try to step on their toes, uh, but you know they they'll ask me questions what I think or if there's something I see that I think might be might be beneficial. I'll certainly pass it along. But you know at the end of the day, uh, Lloyd and his staff, you know that that's their job, and um, I, I I let them do their job. I'm not someone that micromanages people, whether it be the coaches or or the scouting staff. All right, we'll go back to Sarah Spencer. Um, Travis, on a team this deep, and after you've added a handful of vets that are, you know, obviously going to get a decent amount of playing time, how do you continue to make sure that those young guys continue developing their game? Well, they've been doing that all summer, really, uh, and they'll continue to do that in practices. Um, but there's, there's going to be opportunities to play in games. As, as I said earlier, you know, this year is going to be more condensed. You know, we'll be playing games more often. Um, you know, we're... we're <laughs> You know, we're hopeful that we don't have two or three players, you know, become infected. But, you know, you never know. We, we're, in, we're in very uncertain times. So it, everybody's going everybody's gonna to have an opportunity. Um, you know, what we want it to be is very competitive for people to get those opportunities. Um, and I think, uh, as I mentioned last time we spoke, you know, we're, we're now in a position where you're going to have to earn those minutes. You're, they're just not going to be given to you like they have been in the past. So we think that's a positive and, you know, certainly the hope is it's going to bring the best out of everybody and raise everyone's level. If I could follow up real quick, um, second unit struggles obviously happened a lot last year with Trey off the, off the court, sometimes struggling to score. Um, do you feel like you've done enough? It seems like you have, but do you feel like you've done enough to beef up that second unit so that uh, you can still maintain that productivity? Yeah, for sure. I mean, when you just look at, you know, who some of those players might be, you know, Rajon coming on and leading that second unit is a, is a huge upgrade from what we had last year just in of itself. You know, if Gallo's out there or Kevin's out there or Cam or DeAndre or Tony or Salman, like it's just, it's just a much better group, uh, at least on paper, than what we had last year. Thank you. Next question from Edwin Powell. Hey, Travis, um, just curious as to where do you feel the team is in the rebuilding process? I know at the beginning it was about uh, gathering assets, making cap room. I uh, just wanted to say where you see yourself, uh, what the team is in the rebuilding process. Yeah, I mean, clearly we're, we're at the point where we decided to, to push in um, and try to get guys that would blend well with our young guys uh, so we could start taking steps forward in the win-loss column. Um, and that, that's exactly what we've done. As I've said before, you know, that really kind of started last year at the trade deadline in the, in the Capella trade. Um, you know, the first time we used an asset to go get a player to blend with our young guys. So, you know, we're, we're at a point, you know, when you talk about John, Trey, Kevin, Cam, DeAndre, you know, the, all those guys are on their rookie scale deal. Um, and, you know, we wanted to fill out the roster with veteran guys that could help make those guys the best players they can be in the future. Okay, next question from Emmanuel Glaze. Hey, Travis. Uh, you made a lot of moves this offseason from the draft to the free agency, but one that was um, very strong in a lot of people's opinion was bringing Coach McMillan on the staff this year. What do you feel he brings to the team as far as bringing his team together and his experience as a head coach? What do you see his role in um, rebuilding this Hawks team? Yeah, no, um, you know, Greg Foster got, got uh, the promotion to go to the Pacers. Um, you know, he's the number one assistant there. So first off, you know, very happy for Greg. So when Greg left, we had an opening. Um, and obviously Coach McMillan was let go by the Pacers earlier in the summer. To any time you can bring on a coach, uh, you know, 15 years of experience as a head coach in the NBA to, to help a, 
you know, help your head coach, that's a big positive. You know, he, he stood there in Lloyd's shoes for 15 years, and I believe he's been in the playoffs, like 12 of them. Don't, don't quote me on that. But, um, you know, he, he's had a ton of success. Um, you know, those of us that remember him as a player, you know, he was an extremely hard-nosed, defensive-minded basketball player. Uh, and that's what he brings to our coaching staff, too. So we're, we're super excited about bringing him in. He's got a ton of knowledge. He's got a ton of experience. And he's, you know, well, I don't know if you'll ever get to meet him because I don't think you guys will get close enough to the floor this year. But, you know, he, he's a great guy, too. We'll go back to Chris Kirshner. Uh, because of Bogdan's creation abilities on the ball, would you anticipate Trey having more opportunities off the ball than we've seen in his past two seasons? Yeah, I mean, I think one of you guys mentioned earlier, you know, when Trey hasn't had the ball in his hands, you know, we've struggled the last couple of years. So, you know, Bogdan's ability to do that is uh, – it's going to allow Trey the ability to get off the ball a little more and, you know, maybe have easier opportunities. You know, I, I've talked to Trey in the past several times and I always tell him, you know, the easiest time to score in the NBA is when you don't have the ball. And, you know, the first time I told him that, he looked at me like I was crazy. But when you have the ball, there's, there's five sets of eyes on you, right? And when you don't have the ball, there might be one set of eyes on you, but the chances are that guy's looking at the ball too. So if you'll just move without the ball, you know, people always say, how does Steph Curry get so wide open? Because he's moving. <laughs> and half the time your defender stops watching you, you can get some wide open shots. So anytime we can look to get him easier shots, um, you know, we're going to do it. Okay. Back to home team. To those points, uh, Travis, how do you feel about the the quality of finishers you now have on the floor to end the game in that Coach Lloyd Pierce will, will have to go to. It seems like he has a myriad of lineups he can go to depending on what's on the floor in front of him. Yeah, I mean, again, I, it's going to – it's, it's got to be a good feeling for him, right? Because any one night, one of these guys might have it going. Um, you know, Gallo has been a great finisher, you know, 90% free throw shooter in the league and has got an uncanny ability to get the line offensively. Uh, Bogey has been the finisher in Sacramento, the ability to create, create for himself and, uh, and others out there. Obviously, Rondo, we all know what he's done in big playoff games out there. Um, so, and then we all know what Trey and John can do offensively. So it, it's, it's going to give him a lot of different options. And I think, you know, depending on who's got doing what that game, you're going to see different lineups throughout the season. Uh, and that's what we really hope is that, you know, this group comes together as a collective team and it's not about individual success. It's about group success. And that's what's going to drive and uh, really power this team. Thank you. Back to Sarah. Travis, in addition to Bogdanovich, which I know you just talked about, how do you see a lot of the new guys or even Clint uh, which it's crazy that we haven't seen him play yet, but how do you see those guys fitting with Trey? Um, I mean, obviously he's got John as a rim runner too, but um, how do you see him thriving with so many options? Yeah, I mean, we all know what kind of passer Trey is and, you know, he's been dynamic in the pick and roll. Um, but now when you think about some of the guys that we can have around him as, you know, Gallo last year was a 40% three-point shooter. Tony Snell was 40%. Boga was 37. You know, Salmon Hill was 37. Like we've just, we've added a bunch more guys that, that are, you know, statistically have been really good three-point shooters. And that's only going to open up the floor more for Trey or whoever's running in the pick and roll with John or Big O or um, Clint rolling down the middle. So, you know, I, I think it's, it's, hopefully it's going to work out the way we drew it up. <laughs> that was kind of the plan anyway. I think Big O is the official Akongwu nickname, I'm gathering. <laughs> yes, it is. Got it. Much easier to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, back to Jeff Schultz. My first question is, do you think the new Big O has any idea who the old Big O was? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you sort of answered this uh, a little bit a little while ago, but because you have so many new players, do you think it's going to take a while for, for um, Lloyd to figure out what his rotations are, who works together, who doesn't? Um, I know you, you said, you know, talked about strong second units and different people might be in there all the time, but 
Is it going to take a while to figure out because you have so many new pieces? I think so. And just thinking about the situation too, right? Like most of these guys, you know, a couple of them haven't even signed yet. You know, we'll get them all back here this weekend and we have to test for three days and then we have to do individuals for three days. So we're almost a weekend before we can actually first have our, our group practice. Um, you know, in a typical off season, we'd ha have everybody signed in July, guys would start coming in the end of August. You have all the months of September for open gym for guys to play up and down. So really, we, we really have a, almost like a whole new team when you, when you think about it. So I, I do think it's going to take a while. Um, you know, they haven't even announced our preseason game schedule yet. Um, you know, we're either going to play three or four games. We know that much, either two at home and one on the road or vice versa. Um, so, I mean, we don't even have, we don't have our schedule yet. Uh, we hope to have our schedule next week. Um, at least the first half of it. So th there's, there's so many unknowns and it's, you know, hopefully it, it gels very quickly, but I, I do think there, there, there certainly could be a little time for it to, to start to gel for sure. Thanks. Chris Karshner. I'm curious, have you had the opportunity to talk to Trey about the moves you've made? And, and I'm wondering if you have what his reaction has been to uh, all the additions the, the team has now. I haven't really had a chance to sit down and talk to a lot of them. I've been uh, pretty busy on the phone, but you know, next week, once we get, once we get back together, we'll have the opportunity and start spending more time with most, with all our guys. You know, the vast majority of them left today to go spend Thanksgiving with their families. Um, so, you know, they have the opportunity to get away before we get started here. Um, but it, it's, it's, been a, it's been a pretty fast-paced three or four days here. Chris, do you have a follow-up? Not necessarily a follow-up to that, but um, I, I do have to ask with John, um, where do things stand um, with his contract situation? Yeah, so um, we are, as I, as I said before, you know, we would love to get an extension done with John and we're in the middle of, you know, speaking to his agents. Um, but as I've said, our hope is to, to get something done with him. Okay, we'll go to Raphael. Travis, was it a focus for you all to go ahead and sign veterans as in with Gallinari and Rondo? And not just to be effective on the court, but definitely in the locker room as well. For sure. Um, you know, listen, we, we still have a group of young guys that we're very high on. And we wanted to do the best we could to surround those guys with, with vets that could teach them um, how to be turned into good vets themselves one day. And then also, was it a priority to get shooting? for you all, because with Bogdanovich and um, Snail, and of course, Gallinari? Yes, for sure. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, we were, we were 30th in the league last year in three-point shooting. And again, a lot of that wasn't our core group of guys. That was the, the other guys on our roster. Um, you know, we were, I think, 30, 33%. Um, and then, and I actually had my, my staff pull this together because I knew I'd get this question. So the group of guys we just signed, they shot 37% uh, as a group. But if you add the group we just signed with the group of guys still in our roster last year, we'd have been, as a group, 36.4%, which would be good for 12th in the league. So that's a pretty big difference to go from last in the league to almost top third. And, and we're hoping as, as, as our young guys continue to improve and then their numbers go up, that you know we'll, we'll be in the top, you know, hopefully top third of the league this year. All right, uh, we have another question from Ray Glear. Travis, as you, you were acquiring players, how mindful of you were uh, of Boston's skill set and Miami and trying to compete with them? Yeah, I mean, if you, you just look, as you mentioned, in the Eastern Conference Finals, you know, those two teams, you know, a lot of times, you know, Miami didn't have a center out there at all after Bam got hurt. You know, they'd have Andre Godala at the five, you know, Boston plays Tice at the five, and then you have, you know, four skilled perimeter players out on the floor. Um, and if you're going to try to improve, 
or compete against those guys, you know, you need to be able to play that way. And, you know, you think about what Brooklyn's going to have this year with Kevin Durant back. So it, it certainly is, we were certainly mindful of that as, as we were putting this team together. To Allison from WSB. It was more so curious just with how free agency was this year and how it was pushed back and, and you having more time to kind of watch the teams and the players out there. Were there any advantages or, or more so disadvantages just in this free agency process for you this season? Um, good question. Um, you know, we, we, had a, we had a lot of time um, to rank guys, to compile stuff, to do background information, just because it was such a long period um, of the hiatus, so to speak. Um, so we were able to get a lot of work done there. Not that we wouldn't have done it in a normal year, um, but we had so much time to get stuff done. And then the window between the draft and free agency was so short. Um, you know, typically you have about a week, week and a half there. And to this year, you know, we had literally 48 hours before it all started. So it was just, you know, a lot more time where you could get a lot more done early. And then it was just really compressed right after the draft where you didn't have near as much time. We've got a question from Paolo with the ringer. Hey, Travis, I'm um, just kind of jumping off that point. Um, in terms of the timeline going forward and the limited time that you have, how can you and sort of the team, you know, or what are some of the things you guys are thinking about doing in terms of getting people up to speed, um, especially with new players and or young players in terms of, you know, only having such short amount of time to to get ready for the season? Yeah, so, so as I mentioned, you know, you're, the NBA is giving you two tracks uh, where guys can come back uh, on Saturday and start the testing process or come back uh, on Monday and start the pressing testing process. Um, all our guys uh, were more than happy to come back and start testing early so we can get on the floor a little bit earlier, uh, which has been great. Um, and that was, that was not mandatory. That was all voluntary. But all our guys said, yeah, let's do it. We, we need to get to work. So um, we're going to have a little bit of a buffer there uh, from the rest of the league. And really, it's just going to come down to a lot of film work. Um, you know, you're limited to the amount of time you can be on the floor. But you know, all the film work and all the study uh, classroom sessions we can have is just what we're going to have to do to try to get guys up to speed. And as I said, you know, we'll have those three or four preseason games, which are going to be invaluable for our guys, you know, as they're getting to know each other's games and learning to play with each other. Okay. Um, our next question will come from Emmanuel Glaze. Hey, Travis. Uh were you surprised or were you confident in, in the offer that you put out to Bagdanovich that the Kings wouldn't match it? Um, and were you, you, you were surprised or are you happy with the way things went? Yeah, you know, you just never know when you get in those situations, right? Um, so I don't know if surprise is the word, but, you know, you're, you're obviously hopeful. <laughs> um, but you, 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 just, you just never know. You know, we felt, we felt good that it was, you know, maybe on the – cusp of something they might not do or we wouldn't have done it um so you know we were hopeful that that there was a chance they wouldn't match um and that's the way it turned turned out so but to say that we had any inside information or anything like that that would be inaccurate and our final question will come from chris kirshner i'm um, going into your fourth season now do you feel like this is the first off season where you feel like there was an added importance on starting to accelerate the process just a bit? I don't know if I felt like there's an added importance on it. I think that it felt more like about the appropriate time. You know, we did have the most cap space in the league, which is valuable, and you want to take advantage of that. We do have a group of young guys that we feel very confident in, so we wanted to start adding the right pieces to that group so this young group can start to have some success on the floor. Um, and so th there wasn't a ton of money in the market this year as far as competitors with money. So, you know, we knew we had an advantage there, uh, if we could be a little more aggressive. So I, it just, I think a lot of things just kind of lined up for us this year, you know, because of our space, uh, because of other teams lack of space, um, and, you know, 
like I said, we, we feel like we've been real fortunate in the draft the last three years that, that we have a good group of young guys we think that are ready to start uh, taking the next step forward. All right, Travis, thank you very much for your time. Um, thank you, media members, for joining. We hope